We want the truth, so watch Truth Wanted live Fridays at 7 p.m. Central. Visit tiny.cc slash yttw and call into the show at 512-991-9242 or connect to the show online at tiny.cc slash call tw. Welcome to the show. It's the Atheist Experience. We are live. Today is October 24, 2021, unless you're watching us sometime in the future. I mean, you're definitely watching us in the future, even if you're watching us live because there's a delay. And speaking of delays, when we start taking calls, there's going to be a slight delay there. And we'll do our best to handle it because Dave and I are aware of it. How you doing, Dave Warnock? Hey, Matt. Good to be back here. Seems like it's been a while. It has been a little while. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm excited to see how what kind of calls we're going to get today it's always it's, a grab uh, bag isn't it? it it is and i like i like the fact that i, I watched uh talk heathen earlier today and uh really uh in, enjoyed that if you didn't get to see talk Heathen today and go back and watch it but we'll talk more about that stuff now you want to just you want to just jump right in and take a call right off the bat let's do it I, I think we should we've got mark in oregon who has a question about uh, scientific authority versus appeal to, or scientific wow, consensus versus appeal to authority. Uh, welcome. How are you, sir? I'm doing all right. Hello. So what, what's the question? How can we help? So uh, I'm an atheist, um, and I, I, I believe in science. I follow science. Um, and I've had this conversation with other people uh, a few times and I've kind of seen similar topics come up in calls, but never be addressed directly on atheist experience. Uh, on the surface, you know, I, I would accept scientific consensus. The majority of scientists agree with the statement. It's probably true. Um, I've never really been able to explain very well though, what the difference is between that and, you know, taking a claim on authority or appeal to popularity, like logical fallacies. So I was just wondering if you have any insight there. Sure. So first of all, what's wrong with appealing to an authority? Uh, well, so, <laughs> um, being an authority doesn't mean that they're necessarily right. Right. And so when we say that something is a fallacious appeal to authority, what we mean is that it's an argument because arguments are fallacious, not just statements. And what we mean is an, it's yeah. an argument that says that something is true because a particular authority said so. And that's a fallacy because yeah. that authority could be wrong. There's nothing at all wrong with mm -hmm. citing authorities to say the authorities, the experts sure. in this area say this. And so a scientific consensus is basically saying the majority of people who are experts and study this, uh, who have reviewed everything, agree that this is the best current explanation. It doesn't mean that it's true. It's simply saying that the experts in this field are in agreement here. Uh, anybody who's trying to use this as a claim that it's true misunderstands both arguing and science because science isn't making claims of truth. Science is, is, demonst is creating models and theories that are the best current explanations. No, and no, at no point does anything science um, state X is true in, in any sort of philosophical sense. It may be in a localized sense of, you know, it's true, we get this result. It's true, this, you know, it it is an appeal to, um, con appeal to consensus is probably closer to appeal to popularity. Um, in the sense that you're saying, hey, there's a bunch of people who believe this, but it's not a true uh, appeal to popularity because 
we're not talking about all people. We're not talking about, like, oh, the majority of people think there's a God, so therefore there's a God. That would be a fallacy. But if the, if the majority of scientists are convinced that X is the best explanation, then it's a really good bet that that's the best explanation we have right now. Um, and it will be, they will accept the evidence that overturns it in the future. But it's only a fallacy if you construct an argument and say X is true because an authority says so. There's a similar uh, fallacy, which is the appeal to insufficient authority, which is to cite an expert that or an authority that isn't an authority in this area. Like nine out of 10 dentists say Tom Brady is the best choice for your fantasy football team because uh, <laughs> dentists don't have any expertise in that area. Well, and that's the thing I like about science is that it's always willing to be proven wrong with new evidence. Uh, and I look at that in contrast to religion, the world from which I came, and religion starts with a premise or a conclusion and then sets out to try to defend that and to try to make uh, make the facts or evidence fit the conclusion. Someone asked me today, uh, if I really did believe when I was a young Christian, was Jesus coming back soon in my lifetime was the question. And I did. And the reason I believed it is because all the authorities, if you will, the preachers that I listened to at that time told me that. And I thought because they were spiritual authorities, they knew what they were talking about. Well, turns out they had no evidence to support their position. They were just spouting <laughs> off. So that was a, uh, a majority, if you will, consensus, but it wasn't a scientific consensus by any means. Uh, just yeah. the difference between religion and science. Stark. That help? Is it yeah. Give you um, give you some talking points to help make it clear. Yeah, uh, I'm just trying. To, I'm thinking a little bit. Um, yeah, I I don't know. I don't I don't feel like I have too much else to say other than just like things that. I, you know, like a uh, devil's advocate in my head and playing the willfully ignorant. Um, and obviously I'm, that's not gonna, if I'm putting on that hat, nothing's going to convince me. So if you put that, if you put that hat on, you'll be like a number of callers that I tend to hang up on. I, I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen that. Uh, I appreciate the call, Mark. We're, we're going to try and move on cause we got lines full and everything and announcements to make, absolutely. but, uh, Hopefully that Thank helps. And, and if you think about it some more, you'll find ways to find better ways to explain the difference between, Hey, this is scientific consensus, but mm -hmm. as if there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong to appealing to authorities. As long as you're saying, here's what the authorities say. And they are the experts here. If you think you are, have more expertise or better data, because it's the data that we're pointing to. And it's the data that should be convincing the experts. If you could show that the experts were somehow corrupted, that would be uh, an interesting thing, which by the way, is something that a lot of, uh, theists are proposing that science is just corrupt. And so they've, they've closed their mind to any evidence that, you know, I don't know how they, you demonstrate that, but mm -hmm. anyway, if you're watching us live, like I said, you're technically watching us in the future, at least from when I said this, but uh, I can see you when I'm in chat before the show, but I can't see you during the show. So I won't be able to see when you say stuff. But what I wanted to say is that directly below the chat, there's a donation link. Not only can you click that link and 100% of your contributions go directly to the Atheist Community of Austin, uh, no billionaires are going to use any portion of your donation to try to go to space or to get somebody else to go to space. Instead, you just get to uh, help support an organization that does a lot of amazing things. There's other things that you, other ways you can support us as well, not the least of which is that there's merchandise that you can take a look at. And that is at... Uh, tiny.cc slash merch ACA. You can go there and find all your atheist community merchandise. Uh, and I'm sure Nightbot will post something about that merch immediately. There's also membership right here on YouTube, which you can use. Um, and for just 99 cents a month, you can get your own custom uh, uh, badges and you can get out from under slow mode. So when things get crazy in chat and they have to turn on slow mode, you won't have to do that just for a dollar. It's easy. You can also support us at Patreon, patreon.com slash The Atheist Experience. 
And there are a couple of Facebook groups that we've been promoting for a while now. There's the Atheist Experience uh, fan group, and that's AXPFG. And then there's the Atheist Experience private fan group, and that's AXPPFG. Just, we just took the initials and named them that. It was really complicated. And after the show's over, quite frequently, guests and, and hosts and co-hosts will join together on the unofficial ACA Discord. Uh, Dave and I, unfortunately, have other commitments and won't be there tonight. But you can still go, and there's plenty of people there to talk to and have conversations with. And if you had questions that you're not getting answered or that you didn't want to call in and ask on the show, there are people there you can talk to. And some of them uh, are likely to have better answers than, than I might have had. Oh, I can't speak for Dave. But. Oh, yeah. Same here. It's it's amazing, you know, kind of the community that gets built up around um, just this topic and people trying to engage on this. We've yeah. got uh, a theist caller, DJ, in Canada. It just says, contact with a soul. And I'm curious, DJ, are you the contact with a soul? Are you saying you're in contact with a soul? But tell us what's going on so we can try and figure this out. DJ? He's talking to the soul right now, maybe. I don't know. Okay. I'm going to put DJ back in the queue. And maybe we can figure out whether or not uh, what, what DJ uh, thinks is going on. Instead, we got somebody else who goes by initials, and that's GB uh, in California who wants to give a justification for divine hiddenness uh, based on the high holiness, which is great because... The divine hiddenness is on the on those occasions. For those of you who aren't familiar, when I actually present an argument against the the existence of a god, um, divine hiddenness is the one argument that I tend to use. So, welcome, GB. How are you? Hey, I'm doing well. It's good to see you, Matt. Uh, as always, and uh, is it Dave? Hey, GB. Yeah. Hey, Dave. Um, yeah. So this. Uh, you know, the, the idea of divine hiddenness is, is brought up pretty frequently as being a good argument against the existence of God. Uh, and Matt, would you say that you would agree? Well, it's, it's a good argument against certain types of gods. Basically, um, it, it has to fit certain categories. Like if there's a God that is hiding, well, okay, I, you can't use divine hiddenness to complain about that. But it's specifically about the people who are, at, are saying that there's a God who wants us to know that he exists. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Right. Okay. So um, I don't know how Dave, how you feel about this. Uh, would you say that the God of the Bible is one who hides himself? Because I, I do see that the Bible describes God uh, sharing this. God sharing this? Is that what you said? Oh, I'm sorry. This characteristic. You, you, like, um, we, we would all, maybe we can make one that the Bible advocates for divine hiddenness. I, I don't know that that's true. I think the God of the Bible, well, we know that he showed his hind parts to someone. I'm not sure what that means, but um, I think the God of the Bible wants to reveal a God who is involved with his creation, with people that he created. And that's what I, I, that's what I would say that Jesus came to earth to do. I'm just talking about Christian theology here. Jesus was supposed to be man made flesh and uh, mixing among his humanity. So that doesn't look like a God who's trying to be hidden if, in that sense. Wouldn't you agree with that? Well, yes, I would agree with you on that. So, so what's your justification for divine hiddenness? Cause we may just have a different view of God to sort through. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. All right, so my justification for divine hiddenness, as far as I can see, uh, it, it does lie in mystery, but I don't find it hard to believe that God can be so holy and divine and good that it, it justifies him hiding himself at all because we're not anywhere near the same value. So what, what do y'all think? Okay, You're so saying that we're not the same value as God, so he really can't justify mixing up with unclean unholy people is that kind of where you're going with that i mean that's uh, <laughs> no well maybe maybe that is what i'm saying at the heart of it but i would just say i think a fair way of saying it is that god's value is so high uh we we should be honored honestly to even ever catch a glimpse of it or to meet him hmm. like is that a possibility you all think based on what how do you i mean you're you're saying god's value is that high how do you 
how do you mark that? How do you measure that value? With I guess we're just using our imagination at this point, right? Like, well, can, okay. So, can so first of all, GB, would you agree that if I have an argument against a particular God and somebody says, let me use my imagination and propose that it's not hard to believe this, that that is not in any way a rebuttal to an argument. Mm -mm. I mean, if you're just pulling stuff out of your butt, that's that's not a rebuttal. That, I know there's butt in both butt and rebuttal. I mean, we could but if you're just imagine, making stuff up. So yeah. here, let me ask you, GB. You believe in a God, right? Yeah, yeah, I do. Does your God, can your God manifest in reality if it wants to? Yeah. Okay. Does your God know what would convince me that it exists? Yes. Okay. Is your God capable of doing that thing or those collection of things that would convince me? Yeah. Okay. Why hasn't it happened? Now, before you answer, my answer to this is that either God doesn't want me to know he exists or God doesn't want me to know that he exists yet. Do you have an answer other than one of those two? Well, I, I'm kind of agreeing with you on the last part. What is that? But what are the, yeah, what are the, uh, you know, repercussions of that, of agreeing with you, Matt? I, I'm saying that the only conclusions you can reach from that are that either God doesn't want me to know or God doesn't want me to know yet. Do you have a third option other than those two? Some people might. I'm, I'm just leaning. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you. If some other people call, I will ask them, but I'm clearly asking you. And we both knew that, GB. So why say something like some people might? I'm asking you. Do you have a third option? Right. Well, I mean, I wasn't finished yet with my sentence. I, I was just going to say, like, you know, some people might say that, but I'm inclined to agree with you on the second part. It could just be that it's just not yet. So if you don't have a third option, then you are agreeing with my divine hiddenness argument. So instead of calling in to, to, to argue against it, you just agreed with my divine hiddenness argument. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, I, maybe I should clarify that. I agree with you guys on divine hiddenness. I think that the Bible advocates for it, right? There are verses in the Psalms that, that talk about this. But what I'm trying to say is I'm trying to just, you know, shoot the breeze with y'all about the possibility of something being of such high value that it could. Okay. Uh, I, I find that to be, this find that to be a speculative load of bullshit that ignores the entire argument in favor of something you just thought sounded cool. Because the fact of the matter is either God wants me to know that he exists or God doesn't want me to know he exists. One of those two is true. And if God does want me to know he exists and you agree that he can manifest in reality and he does know what would convince me and he's capable of doing it, then that leads to reductio absurdum, which means that God does not exist. GB, here's the thing about Matt. Matt's been doing this show for 16 plus years. I know people personally who've been helped out the door of Christianity because of Matt's arguments and Matt's logic and reason through this, through watching this show, you would think that it, man, Matt's inviting this God to reveal himself. I've heard Matt say that repeatedly, God, here I am. Show yourself to me. I'm open to the evidence. Show me you're real. And this God continues to, for whatever reason, and you seem to think it's a good idea. This God continues to remain hidden while multitudes of people are being turned away from him by this evil Matt Delahunty fellow. You would think that God would reveal himself to Matt of all people to put an end to this evil show and, and not have people being led astray. So your argument for hiddenness is perplexing to me. You keep using the term God's high value, and yet you don't have any way to measure that value. You don't have any definition for this God. Uh, when I suggested that Jesus came to be present among people to reveal God in flesh, you kind of dismiss that. You want to you want to believe in this God that for whatever reason remains hidden. And I got to tell you, a God that remains hidden and uninvolved and completely dismissive of what's going on in the world, what value does that God have to anyone? Well, first of all, I, I, and by the way, thank you, David. I appreciate your response. I think we got off on the wrong foot here. When I when I was trying to say that I'm trying to justify divine hiddenness, 
I'm not trying to object to divine hiddenness. I'm just trying to find reason for why God would implement divine hiddenness. I'm not the slightest not bit there. interested in that. Because all there. that is, I mean, that's just speculative nonsense. You're basically saying, I have no evidence, I still believe, and because I don't have any evidence and I still believe, I need to make some shit up as to why God's not giving me evidence. And anybody can do that for anything. I can say, well, I still believe that the aliens are visiting me regularly, even though I don't have evidence. And so I'll just speculate that they have a really good reason for not, you know, a capability for not leaving evidence. And when the fairies come and do my laundry at night, uh, and they and they steal socks because clearly there are fairies that come and steal my socks at night when I'm doing laundry. Obviously, um, uh, the only evidence I have is that a sock is missing, but I can't prove it to anybody else. So I'm just going to speculate that those those fairies are just really really powerful, and they are intentionally hiding this so that people don't believe there are fairies. How is what you're trying to do with God any different than anything anybody could make up about anything that they couldn't prove? That's question one, and question two is. How on earth can you justify believing this while acknowledging that you don't have any good reason to believe? Wait, so I think you brought up really good points earlier that I would really like to address, Matt, before we go on to any, any further questions, if that's okay. I, I guess. I think the two questions I asked are the only ones that matter at this point, but go ahead. Okay, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, but really quick before I move on, Dave, you also were trying to, I heard you trying to say something. I just didn't know if you had an opinion on this that you wanted to get out. Go ahead, and, uh, go ahead and, and answer the questions that Matt was directing. Let's stay on one thing here. You're kind of drifting all over the place. Okay, well, let's bring it down to the very beginning when we first started, right? Matt, you presented an option that says that it could be that God wants you to know about him and it just might not be the time yet. There's nothing wrong with that. That could, that's a very a valid option. That makes no sense, but whatever. I'm 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 fine with that being a, a, a valid option, uh, which is why I presented it with the original version of my argument. So once again, you're agreeing with me on divine hiddenness. You going to address the other questions? Well, I mean, I can. I I'm starting to get the feeling that maybe we're we're not so chill about this. I I don't want to offend anybody. You know, like I I hope we're having a good conversation, but I'm starting to get the feeling maybe we should talk about this another time. Uh. Uh, so when it comes time for you to give a justification for why you're believing something without a good reason, you, you, you don't want to do that. I mean, that's the whole purpose of the show, you realize, right? Yeah, yeah, I am. Um, okay, okay. Uh, so it, it could be, yeah, the very well the case that uh, that God is, he doesn't tend on, uh, you know, on proving himself today. It's just not the right time. Why would that necessarily be a bad thing? There was someone earlier that said that, it is possible that doing so at this moment could conflict with some other desire. God prioritizes more. Thank you uh, to the person in the chat that said that. Uh, what do you What do you think about that? Like, it it well, could very well be a biblical. I think these are all excuses. Uh, it please, could be. Please, it could be. It please, could be. You keep saying it could be. Please, please tell me what the right answer is and how you know what the right answer is. Why will not? Why is it that God, if He exists, why is He not revealing Himself? Well, I mean, I just gave you an answer. I, I think no, no sir. No, wrong. sir, you did not. No, no, sir, you did not. You just said that there may be a reason. I want to know what the reason is and how you know what the reason is, because you're the one who's here as God's advocate. Yeah, well, the honest answer is I don't know. You know, the, I, don't, did, I don't know how okay. I ever really know that. I can appreciate that. Did God reveal himself to you? I believe he has, yeah. In what way? Well, through the Bible. That's not, no, I, I have the exact same book you do. I'm talking about God revealing himself in a way that confirms his existence to someone. How did God reveal himself to you? Oh, well, I mean, I mean, that is how I believe that he has revealed himself to me. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to like get around your question. That's just genuinely what I believe. Okay. So if that's the case, then anybody who reads the Bible should get that same feeling, right? Feeling. No, I'm, no. Well, you have to have Could faith. Have... 
right? GB, you if if you're, here's a sheet of paper and it has, oh, it fine. says 10 things. And if I hand this to someone and they say, wow, God just revealed me, himself to me through this sheet of paper, then any other person should be able to look at that sheet of paper and get the same revelation, right? Otherwise, you're saying it's something other than that piece of paper. Which one is it? Is it the piece of paper? GB, you sound like a really, really nice guy, but it's clear that you, it's obvious to me that you have faith in a God that you can't prove, that you don't have any evidence for other than words you read in a book called the Bible, which is a completely unreliable document. It's been shown over and over. And I just, I, I would appeal to you to, to th really think through what you're believing and why, because you, you haven't demonstrated any good reasons to believe in this God that you say his best option is to remain hidden. And yet you, you believe the Bible and the Bible says that Jesus walked among us as God in the flesh. So you're kind of all over the board with who this God is, how he has presented himself, how he presents himself now in present day, modern world. And, and yet, because it's obvious that God is not uh, uh, obvious, he's not evident, he's not around, he's not, nobody's seeing him, healing, hearing him, feeling him. So your best option is to surmise that he's remaining hidden for some reason. Why do you want to believe in this God that is impotent and invisible and uninvolved? Well, well, I don't think he's uninvolved, right? But uh, Cool, then you can demonstrate to us how he's involved. Where is he involved? Anywhere? With yeah. anyone? <laughs> well, I, I said I don't think he's involved, right? I can't, I, I can't claim, I can't prove that. But what I, what I would say to answer oh, this... How many things really do that, you believe that you can't prove? Pretty much and, all And of why them. are they all about gods and, and things that are really important? Like, I can't believe things that can't be demonstrated. I mean, I can accept things no, wait, well, propositionally, I'll, I'll, but wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm I mean, sorry. I'm sorry. But I, but I mean, if somebody comes to me and says, "Hey, uh, here's here's this God," and there isn't evidence for it, I can't believe that God exists. I certainly wouldn't start speaking about how I think God is interacting in reality or anything else. And yet, you do all of that, and then every time some we, we ask for a demonstration, oh, I can't prove it. Well, how many other things are you willing to accept on such crappy evidence? Just this one. I mean, just this, just one. this one. So, so you admit this is special pleading that you are making a special exception for a God that you wouldn't make for any other reasonable claim. Yes. Okay. Well, at least you're honest. Uh, GB, you do realize that Matt and I both used to believe in this same Christian God, the same God of the Bible. And when we were presented with evidence and with ideas that didn't match up with our beliefs, we discarded our beliefs. I would encourage you to consider that. Just throwing that out there. Well, yes, I, I am familiar with your story. Um, man, you know, I obviously I've got more questions, but you guys have more people on the line. I appreciate that just you guys would take the time to talk to me. Maybe we can discuss this another time. Uh, thank you, Matt. Thank you, David. I appreciate y'all. I'd love it if you actually had like an argument or evidence because... Think it through, brother. Uh, this is this is something, and I'm not trying to be a dick to you or anybody else, but at this point, I've been doing this for 16 years, but we've been having these discussions for thousands of years. And if you're not going to come with an argument or an evidence uh, to, to, to justify what you believe, then you're only doing half of this. The, the question here consistently is, tell us what you believe and why. And the why is the most important part. The what yes. is absolutely trivial. There's a million people in history I can point to who believe almost the same thing that you believe. And I want to know why. That's that's the important thing. And that just seems to be the thing that, that none of you can get to. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's fair. I mean, now that seems to be the case, right? It depresses me sometimes. I remember when I was 14, I watched you, Matt, for the first time on Atheist experience and you broke my heart because you broke my faith and i think i just found my way back uh you know through <laughs> persistence how, how sad I, how sad that you you lost your faith and you got it back but you can't tell me why 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 could do, can do you get any information from god 
I think so. Yeah, I think. Then so. why don't you ask God what you should say the next time I ask you why you believe? Well, I do, but I mean, I don't hear anything. God back. told you. What has God no, told you? You don't hear anything back. That's the point. You don't hear anything back. I never did. Well, that's okay. For Thirty-seven years. Why? No, no, no. It's not okay. If there is a God, He's fucking punking you. Would you be in a relationship well, with any other person, any other entity on the planet that never responded to you? Would you pretend that you had a relationship with a person you lived with, a partner or a roommate, and you came in every night and talked to them and had conversations with them and never, not once ever, did they say anything back to you? Would you consider that a healthy relationship in any way? To be fair, Dave, I feel like you asked you asked two different questions, right? You would ask you asked originally, like, would you be in a relationship with someone that never responded to you, basically? Yeah. And then Same the other thing. one, yeah. like an abusive relationship. You come right? home every day after work. It, you talk to them. You the thing he's trying to, to them, ask and they is, never say anything back. How is your relationship with God different from having an imaginary friend? Well, I, I would say it's because he actually interacts in the world. Right. Well, no, people he with doesn't. imaginary friends can ask them questions and get answers. You don't even get that much from God. You get less from God than people with imaginary friends get from their imaginary friends. Well, well, I disagree. No surprise there. What well, you are, you uh, can disagree, but you are factually wrong. But you're not bringing any evidence other than I think so, I hope so, and I wish. It, you found your way back because you want to believe, GB. That's the bottom line, and I just would love it if you could be honest with yourself and get back to a place of reality instead of this fantasy world you're living in. Would you prop a teddy bear up on the couch and come in every night and talk to it? What do you want to watch tonight? And he doesn't say anything back to you and you just flip the channels because you're going to do what you want to do. That is your relationship with God, GB. Well, it's, I will agree with you that at the end except of the day, that you could show me a teddy bear. <laughs> That's more real. Yeah. Uh, the teddy bear is more real. And if I talk, you know, go talk to a psychologist uh, about talking to young people in particular who have imaginary friends. I can ask them what their imaginary friend thinks and they can tell me. I can ask them for information from their imaginary friend and they can relay messages. And they are, at least to some degree, convinced that they're getting those messages. You have less than that. And so does every other theist on the planet, as far as we can tell. Otherwise, we wouldn't keep having these debates. Otherwise, there would be a 25 prizes awarded to the most brilliant people who all demonstrated the truth of a God. And yet, every single Sunday for 16 years, we're sitting here talking shit about every God that, you know, people think they that exists. None of them ever do shit. Why? Is it more likely that they don't well, exist or just that, eh, I'm going to stay hidden for a while because he I'm hasn't too, revealed himself yet. too high and mighty. If he doesn't care to, to reveal himself to me, why did he care to reveal himself to you in a way which you can't show to anybody else? I mean, none of this makes sense, GB. That's all I'm saying. I'm sorry that you can't demonstrate it. Neither has anybody else. Think it through, man. But... You don't get to pretend like it makes sense or that you have a, a good reason to believe. You, you can freely admit that you have, you and you did, so congratulations. That's honest. You had said you didn't know and that you have a uh, a bias towards this God that, you know, that basically becomes a special pleading argument. But that's fallacies. Yeah. Um, well, okay. Yeah, I mean, we can leave it at that. Like, I... To be fair, I'm looking at the chats. I guess I didn't really give a defense, right? So I, I hope you all don't come come off as with me thinking that I I give an accurate defense because I, I guess I didn't. So no, you didn't. I would uh I would like to I could come. I would love to come back. Maybe I could look at like the critiques. Sure. From the Discord. Take it all in. Take in what Dave said. Look at the Discord <laughs> stuff. Take notes. Come up with something because when you say you want to give a justification for divine hiddenness. If, I, if we'd have known that it was just going to be, well, maybe God's too high and mighty to interact with us. Okay, well, that is in direct opposition to one of the premises of the God that I'm arguing against or the type of God that I'm arguing against. And it's in direct opposition to Christianity, which I'm going to assume, even though we didn't clarify that, is the, is the religion 
for which you are accepting a God, right? Yeah. The one true yeah. God. Of course, why would we be talking well, about anyone else, right? Well, it's, well that's, this I'm is the thing, oh, uh, except yeah. that, you know, uh, the one true God. The notion yeah. of that God is that He absolutely <clears throat> needs people to understand or, or to uh, to come to know Him, because that is what judgment is based on. Otherwise, He is just immoral and is going to punish who He wants to. Actually, that's in the Bible too. That He, He, he you know, it's it's through grace. So there's nothing you do. It doesn't matter if He reveals Himself. He's going to save who He wants and He's going to punish who He doesn't want. Uh, everything happens according to His plan. And all of us are without excuse because according to the Bible, since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power, divine nature, all that type of stuff uh, are clearly visible. And, you know, but except that that's not true. It's Isn't not it amazing, GB, yeah. that the one you happen to believe in is the one true God? Isn't that amazing? How convenient. It's good. Mm -hmm. Very convenient. But I do want to yeah. say that, Matt, I have been thinking about that lately, about that verse and maybe we can talk about this some other time but yeah i've been questioning what exactly is paul trying to get like what is the context that he is does this verse apply to everybody or just the specific romans that he was talking to i think it's worth discussing one day with y'all for sure i would agree too gb so here's what you do you ask god what paul meant and then you call me back and tell me what god told you to say this god that's involved with you fair enough, man. Fair enough. okay See you later. Oh, I'm sorry, David. Did I cut you off? No, you're good. Thanks, GB. Thank you. All right. Oh, my. So there's a lot of debates uh, and a lot of opportunities for debate. And one of the things I like to point out is that in addition to those other Facebook groups, there's an atheist versus theist debate group that you can go check out. That's XP fan debates on uh, Facebook.com. Uh, if you want to have discussions like that, or if you want to practice to call in and have discussions, you know, you can talk it over with people. And if you stump some of them, maybe you can come on and stump us. The problem is you're not going to stump us with things that don't have any evidence or any support. You're not going to stump us with, well, maybe it's this. It well, could be. Could be that. That is not an argument. It could yeah. be. When, when, when the, the truth is, it's worse than that, because for most of the time when people say it could be this, it may be the case that it couldn't be that. It may be the case that that's actually impossible. They haven't even demonstrated that that's a possible explanation, uh, that just because they, they have an unfalsifiable proposition, they haven't ruled it out. Uh, but if you are watching here today, we greatly appreciate it. Earlier today, there was talk even, which I mentioned uh, earlier, which is, had uh, MD Aware and Katie Montgomery on. Uh, they did outstanding. There were some great calls there. There were some really good discussions. I'm hoping for, for similar discussions here as well. In between those two shows, though, you could have listened to the nonprofits. That's uh, Sundays at three o'clock with new hosts, new segments. They, uh, all of those shows and our show are available as audio only podcasts. You can go to tiny.cc slash AEN podcast. That's your one-stop destination for all those shows. Truth Wanted, Secular Sexuality, everything that the ACA does. If you aren't familiar with those other shows, uh, you should really, really give them a listen. And later on, we'll give you a little taste. But here's the crew who make all of this possible. These are the people who are screening the calls, who are managing the audio, managing the video. Uh, some of them are managing me. I'm uh, just like smacking me around for fun sometimes, which is, you know, I, I guess it's fun for them. Can you but, imagine having to manage Matt Dillahunty? Seriously. It's not as hard. <laughs> it's not as hard as people might think in this okay. context, managing me outside the show. Yeah. You know, all bets are off. Good luck. But uh, we have among the shows that the ACA produces, one of my favorites from the beginning is truth wanted, which has objectively Dan as the primary host there, although there are new people involved in the show now. And it's because it doesn't necessarily focus only on religion, which means that it can focus on other things. Before we continue, I've been asked to make this announcement. For those of you with weak constitutions, please cover your ears and eyes for the next two minutes. For those of you remaining, the ACA is pleased to announce that we'll be doing something extra special this Halloween. You're not going to want to miss this first-of-a-kind event, which will air shortly after the Atheist Experience on October 31st. So make sure you're sitting down 
and check out this preview of our upcoming event, if you dare. Hi everybody, Objectively Dan here from the ACA's very own Truth Wanted, and I am here at the Driscoll Hotel, Texas's supposedly most haunted hotel. And we are going to be doing a very special live event on October 31st, Halloween night, where we are going to be live streaming in the hotel's allegedly most haunted room. Buckle up, people. I'm looking nice. forward to it. Uh, be fun. I think Jim and I, or I think you, Jim and I, the twins, uh, yeah. are, are doing the uh, Halloween episode of Atheist Experience, and then this will air immediately afterwards. So I'm looking forward to seeing what's going on. What have you got going on around Halloween, Dave? I'm probably going to eat a boatload of candy. Um, we usually do some candy here at the house and trick-or-treat. Bevan has a Halloween run. Uh, I think the night before that, she sponsors a, a run club in Charlotte here, so they always do a dress-up Halloween run, but I'm just a, a bystander. Nice quasi-British accent there, by the way, Matt. Oh, I I don't know what it was. I just... <laughs> I, I, I've i done a lot of voices. I, I, I thought about getting into voice acting work for a while, and, mm -hmm. and I had an ex who I would... Uh, do stories for and put on different voices and some of them were more morgan freeman like and some of them were different things but it was it was a lot of fun mm -hmm. so i think that um oh i just got a note before we get on to the next call since i promised it and since we've been going on for a while all those podcasts including truth wanted uh, have one thing in common and that is Somebody out there missed him, and it's time for us to show you what you missed. I had this dream that there was golden feces coming from the sky, taking a on his dad's church. Hi, it's good to be on. Thank you for calling. Thank you for calling. What do you got for us today? Well, I have a story about time travel and how I time traveled myself. Is there a DeLorean involved? Oh, hey, Jesus, do you forgive me? Yeah, yeah, you're good. You're square. That doesn't make you square with the person that you've wronged. Yeah, That's... or with mortal law. Like, great, you earned your way back into heaven. Super duper for you. One million but... subs by the end of the day. We can do this, you guys, for the nonprofits. <laughs> I will dress like Dr. Evil. If we get to a million subs, I'll shave my head bald. And... Oh, my God. One, and I'll come in and do the <laughs> one million subs thing. I can do this all day long. You ain't got no power, and your God ain't got no power. I ain't afraid your God could give me a hangnail. Why can't you answer a simple question? What good would it do for you to read scripture? There you have it. I always love those. I tell you what, we got a bunch of calls going on. I'm going to, I want to try an experiment. Um, I didn't tell anybody I was going to do this. Uh, we have a lot of callers, including a lot of theist callers. And so here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to see if without running over time, we can actually get to all these calls. So I would like for us to both exercise some patience with regard to the, the gap, uh, the delay, mm -hmm. but also maybe decide a little quicker if we're not going to get an answer to a relevant question and uh, not keep Matt, people you know on how hold. to hang up. You know how to hang up on a man. Just do your thing. Keep, not not keep people on hold for ages, but we have yeah. Andre who's been on hold for 45 minutes. Um, Welcome, Andre. You've got a you're a deist and want to make a case for uh, something greater than us. So have at it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I love your show. I just uh, started listening to you about a month ago, and uh, and and you make everybody study more uh, in Christianity, religion, and everything. I love it. But my thing is is that uh, 
as an individual, uh, I know that I have to breathe this substance to stay alive. I can't go to the GM building, the tallest building here in Detroit, and jump off of it and fly around like Neo did in the Matrix. Uh, and I have to uh, obey certain laws of the universe. So to me, as an individual, I don't know what the name or title uh, or anything, but I, I have to agree that there's something greater than myself in this form because I have to do all these things like every other creature to stay alive. I so agree with you. When I see, I, I agree with you. The when, thing when, that you're, I, the oh, thing that you can't sorry. come up with a label for that thing is called physics. Mm -hmm. It's physics. It is the, the nature of the universe that requires you to breathe. And that says that you can't uh, defy gravity. Um, there's no reason. Do you, do you have some reason to think that it has to be a thinking agent? Well, um, I know there's intelligence, and yeah. and I don't know if you guys there has to be a or a, a origin or originality of anything that, in our understanding, something has to originate from something. So uh, my thing is like, uh, okay, there's atheists and there's religion, organized religion. I'm, my spirit is sort of what when I look, I'm looking at squirrels right now and birds. My my thing goes with them. They are the same fallen system. They're killing each other, uh, eating each other, but they're not under the hangups that we are in our form when we've been under words and the manipulation of words. And I and I tell people, what, what is this? It, what it hey, Andre? I just what does any of this have to do with whether or not there's a god? Uh, because there, I I don't go for the title God. I'm just saying there's something greater than myself because okay, whatever I'm this what, atheist, Andre, whatever this something greater is, can you tell me what its properties are? I like, don't know. I just have common sense it, to know that th it, this I, isn't. No, no, no. Common I, sense I is to, is common sense is uncommon and it's not evidence. This thing that you think is greater than us is it intelligent? Well, is there intelligent? Intelli I, I'm intelligent, you're intelligent, but is the thing that you think is greater than us, is that intelligent? It, it, it has to, intelligence had to have originated somewhere. Well, it, uh, intelligence originates in a mind. Okay, now go back further. Y yes, and so we get, that, that's a physical process. There's no no evidence for a spirit or a soul. It's physical process goes back to whatever the origin of life was. Okay, that that's good. I can go with that. Uh, and I guess we can all be like, how did something begin with nothing? And so the answer is we don't know. Winners. And the answer is we don't know. And so given that, how can you justify believing that there's something greater that is intelligent? Well, I don't, I don't use the, the title believe. I just know that, okay, if I'm going to choose to go against this greater force, then I should not have to, I should be able to do something other than live, move, and have my being like everybody else has to die, uh, obey the laws of a uh, universe. It would be impressive to me if, if, I, if there was somebody that said I'm going against something greater than me that, they didn't have to go through the mundane things that everybody else has to go through. That would be impressive. I, I don't, I, Andre, I haven't the slightest fucking clue what you're talking about. Um, the fact of the matter is you can't violate the laws of physics, and that doesn't mean that there's a God or anything greater than us. You're assuming so, that there's a higher thinking? power. You're, you're, you're assuming that there's a greater power, and that when you say you can't go against it, in other words, you can't fly against gravity and so on. You're making a lot of assumptions without any evidence, and the like Matt said, uh, there well, are certain well, things. There, the, the there are certain. Don't, don't talk. Don't talk. Don't evidence. talk. I'm talking. I'm talking. Thank you. I muted you so that Dave can finish. Thank you, Andre. You don't interrupt me. I didn't interrupt you, but the the uh, assumption that because we don't understand something or we don't know it yet, the assumption that there must be a greater power, there must be some deity, even if you don't want to call it God. To assume that there's some force out there is just is just making an assumption. I mean, back when 
They didn't understand what caused lightning and thunder. They assigned gods to that. And then we've learned now what causes lightning and thunder. So we don't need a god of lightning and thunder. That's what science is doing. That's what we're doing as we evolve and learn more about the world around us. But don't make assumptions that there's some greater power because there's no evidence of such. Am I still on? Yeah. Hello. Oh, okay. So is it an assumption that you have to breathe what you're breathing to stay alive? No. Oh my God. That's physics. That's the world we live in. It's not because of some deity. Okay. Where did physics come from? Physics is, it didn't come from anywhere. Physics it's a is law a that description. defines what's around us. F physics is a description of how the universe works. It's not like, so there's a difference between prescriptive laws and descriptive laws. Prescriptive laws are thou shalt not drive faster than 55 miles an hour. That's a prescriptive law. A descriptive law is what physics is. It describes what's happening. There's no, there's no origin for physics. There's no tinkering for physics. There's no mind behind physics. This is just what happens. It's the same for chemistry. Physics, dix, dis, sorry, physics dictates what, how chemistry works, how different atoms and molecules interact with each other. There's not any reason to believe that there's a mind behind it or that it could have been any other way. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that it's... Now, go ahead. Um, can I... Uh, yeah, that's, that's a good point. On, a, on another deeper point, Okay, you've done this for 16 years, correct? Uh, 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 being on the atheist thing, yeah, and more, the more than that, yeah. Spent their, yeah. They've spent their life. Here's a deeper thing: if there, I'll be the judge of that. Life, uh, if there's only one life to live, why would you waste all that time on either side, religionists or atheists, wasting your time instead of just living Andre. like all of other creation living? Andre, so I am living, and I'm Andre. This? Andre, I'm answering your fucking question. I am living. I'm doing what I enjoy, and in the process, I'm helping people free themselves from false beliefs, from fallacies, from religious dogma, from hateful doctrines that are ruining people's lives, including my life. I'm a participant in this system, not somebody who can just sit back and say, well, I'm just going to enjoy my life, fuck everybody else and their rights. I'm working to guarantee and help promote the rights of all people equally because I benefit from that, because I live in the world, because I'm not just a leaf on the fucking wind going through the world, because my life matters and your life matters. And even if your life doesn't matter to you, it matters to me. That's why I do this. It, 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 it does, but why ain't all the other no, creations? Andre, you're done because you didn't listen to shit. Bye. People can't seem to understand that we talk about this because religion is a real thing that does great damage. And if religion didn't exist, you and I probably wouldn't be doing any of this. Yep. I, I wouldn't be. I mean, hell. But they keep inflicting damage on people and society, and we have to push back or we just don't care. That's if Dave fine. or that's I, the way I see it. Sorry, Dave. I, I, no, that's it. <laughs> there's a gap. If Dave or I go to all the trouble to make a point and answer a question, and you are instantly speaking about the the but, this, what, that, that means you weren't fucking listening. You were waiting for your turn to talk, and your turn to talk is now over. But somebody mm -hmm. else's turn to talk is here, and that's yes. DJ in Canada who we tried to get on at the beginning, uh, and we, we didn't get an answer, but it's about contact with the soul. So welcome, DJ. Hey, uh, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Hello? Hello, DJ. Right. Oh, uh, sorry about that. Yes, hello. Uh, yes, uh, about me, uh, actually, I'm not an educated guy. Uh, um, it, it's an experience that happened many years ago. But what happened is about 15 years ago, just before I had the cancer in the throat, um, I got tested for IQ and I got tested very low IQ. So I got through my cancer, everything, and I tried to educate myself, but I'm not a scholar. So um, I, I listened to many podcasts and uh, uh, here and there, and I listened to some of you to know the truth from every side and every angle and everything to learn about it. And uh, in the... Uh, February 14 uh, the, for the, uh, the val uh, Valentine uh, uh, Day, right. you were asking people to call uh, for some people who had uh, experience uh, with the, the death or something like that. 
I didn't want to call because I didn't see my family in 30 years. So what I'm talking to you now, it's a little bit tricky because I should have seen some people before. And also later on, uh, I was listening to other podcasts and uh, then uh, I saw the, the, the story about uh, um, the, uh, Robert Vigano with the, the, the consciousness test, uh, the 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 contest is going to go next week on uh, November 1st, the one uh, he's asking about if there's a conscious afterlife and everything like that. So me, I did live that experience. I know there is. But the thing, I could not make the contest because I'm not educated enough. So I would be like uh, those people. He's asking people who have made study in life and they can express uh, what happened on the other side uh, about their experience and everything. My only thing I can say is... Uh, I would be a paraplegic Olympic compared to those guys because I'm not educated. So, so now I'm I, I don't know about the story. What happened? Yes, I'm going to tell you about the story now. Okay. I, I, went, I didn't go to my family. I was on drugs for many years. And then uh, I, I didn't know if my family, my dad was uh, still alive or uh, dead or something like that. I decided to go back home. And I went to uh, ask a friend of mine because I live in Vancouver now, and this happened in Quebec. So when I went back in, uh, in, uh, in Quebec to my hometown, I went to where I grew up as a, uh, in a summer house. And uh, when I went there, I arrived at the place. When I saw at the beginning of the hill, I see that the, the sign, it was changed. It was not my family name anymore, that the, the people who raised me because I've been adopted. So... I was a little bit in denial, but hey, they were in Florida, so I said, well, maybe they stay in Florida now, they don't come back, and you know, I was a little bit in denial, and then I went down the hill, I checked the lake, I checked the, the, the place, I was with the guy who drives me, my friend, and then when I passed by the, the, the fireplace, I was telling him that, that we built that together as a kid, and that's when I got the, the leg uh, shaked. Uh, it's like uh, they grab, uh, they grab uh, uh, my ankle, and uh, electric power goes up to up to my knee. But I was a little bit in denial because I didn't want him to be dead. So I, I kind of, and I was with a friend. I didn't want him to feel what I was feeling. So I kind of, I didn't have to stop, but it, it kind of did stop. So uh, anyway, uh, things stay like that. And I had a lot of uh, 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 understanding what happened to me. And uh, I knew there was him. Later on, I find out that he was dead over six years. I knew he's not buried over there. That's another thing. Because I start to think about the, the thing and what it means. Because to me, it means that when we die, the conscious goes on the other side. So that's for me, there's no deny. I cannot prove what I tell you, what I feel and everything like that. But for me, I know that. So okay. the first thing I tell about is that uh, he's been dead for six years. I knew he was not buried there, but because I never back to my family, I don't know, maybe he died at that place. And that's why I, I had the feeling there. If he didn't die at that place, that means he knew I was going there and he came to contact me. That uh, it's a hard for me to understand why uh, people don't come back to contact their kids because they didn't come back to it for 20 years or stuff like that. It doesn't happen to others. It happened to me. Uh, there's many things who come to have more questions than answer. So well, it, it, well, it, it, uh, it, uh, it's still a tricky experience for me. So, so let me, let me, I got lots of questions. I'm sure Dave has questions. I'm, I'm sorry you had this experience, but I'm, and, and I don't, I'm not trying to be mean, but I'm, I'm more sorry, sorry that you've I'm reached, sorry. I'm, just saying... I'm, I'm more sorry that you've reached a conclusion like this, because if I felt something in my ankle that was like electricity up to the knee, it felt like somebody grabbed me and I felt electricity up to the knee. What evidence do we have that that has anything to do with, dead people well for me matt is the, the it's the whole thing the concept right i go up i get down i watch a place i start to my friend I talk, and then i got the contact 
I cannot really prove what it means or stuff like that, but I, I'm not. I'm I, so, uh, is, uh, DJ, stop. Okay, I, I'm gonna ask you. I can no, I, no, can no, I, no, DJ, stop. I, I'm asking, what evidence do we have that this experience of feeling like you've been grabbed with electricity going to your knees is in fact tied to dead people? And if the answer is we don't have any evidence, that's fine. But I'm asking if there's evidence. The thing is dead. Uh, do we believe in? Do you believe in the soul? No, I don't believe in the soul. But I'm asking if there's evidence. Okay. 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 No, no, that's my problem, Dave. Okay. I, no, the next question then, DJ. I'm going to ask. DJ, yeah. the next question is, why would you believe something if you don't have evidence for it? Okay. Uh, uh, do we have a mind? We can't we can verify the mind because of a, when we go to scan, I think they can see the activity of the mind, right? DJ, I asked why you would believe something if you don't have evidence for it. I have evidence for a mind. Okay, okay, that's why I'm trying to tell you. I, I don't have evidence. I'm trying. I know personally that what happened to me, that's what I'm telling you. How can I? I've heard the story, DJ. Yeah. I, ha yeah. I have specific questions, and the questions are here for a reason. The first question was, is there evidence that an experience like this is tied to dead people? The answer is no. The next question is, why would you believe it if there's not evidence for it? That's the whole question. Uh, it's so hard. Uh, I, I, I don't have evidence. I know. For me, it's not, because, it's not because there's no explanation that is not true. Okay, I'm going to ask you another way. Is it possible that what happened to me is the soul of my dad? Is it possible? I have no idea if that's possible. I have no evidence that there is a soul. I have really good evidence that there's no such thing as a soul. No reason to think there's a soul. No reason to think that the soul can do anything outside of a body okay. or that it exists in any way. So I can't say it's possible, which is why we don't get to consider it as a possible explanation. You have to prove that something is possible before it gets to be considered as a candidate as an explanation for something. That's my point. I understand that, and that's the hardest thing for me to prove. I cannot prove it, first of all. It's impossible for me. I, I understand that, DJ. I understand you can't prove it. I'm asking why do you believe it then if you can't prove it? Because, okay, I had a term, very uh, bad life, okay? and I, I don't know how that's relevant. Was a drug addict. <laughs> I know. I understand. I don't. What I'm trying to say is, I I understand more and less why he contact me. But it, see, people don't come. I'm not the only one who was drug uh, on drug a drug addict. Didn't go back to his family for twenty to thirty years. Contact, right? DJ, what does any of this have to do with why you believe it? Yes, because he was trying to tell me something. No, 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 you don't get to assume that he was trying to tell you something. You'd need to prove that. If you, if I just assume that, if I just assume that there are dead people who want to tell me things, then that can serve as a justification for anything weird that happens. But you don't get to make that assumption. But I don't want, I, 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 you're really an atheist because it seems that you cannot, don't want to believe in anything. No, um, sir. No, sir. And now you're done. I'm, I tell you what, DJ. DJ, I'm willing to believe something. in anything that you can actually present evidence for. And I was sitting here patiently to ask why on earth people would believe something without evidence. And your response is to accuse me of being closed minded that I don't want to believe anything. Well, I'm not going to be, I don't believe I'm going to be wasting any more time talking to you about this because you are not being honest with me. You don't get to accuse me of not wanting to believe shit. I would be happy to believe that there are souls and lives and afterlives if there was any fucking evidence Who, for it. Yeah. But because there's us? not evidence for it, and you, and I can't justify people believing it without evidence. That's dangerous. All of us have people in our lives and our past that we would like to see again, that we feel like we have unfinished business with. And, and DJ, I just, I'm sorry you had a hard life. I'm sorry about those experiences. Matt and I don't doubt that you had some kind of an experience, something you felt, what we doubt is your interpretation of that. 
and what the conclusions you've drawn around that. You simply seem to be believing something because you want to believe it. I was just in Seattle last weekend to speak at a memorial service for a young man who died of ALS. He would have been celebrating his five-year wedding anniversary with his wife next week. He didn't get to do that. Do you, do you think she would like to see him again in some afterlife because they had such a brief, horrible, they, their whole marriage was identified by ALS. They were married six months when he got diagnosed. He had, to, he had ALS for four years and then he died a horrible death. Of course, he, she would like to see him again in an afterlife, but she doesn't believe she will because she doesn't believe things like that are true because there's no evidence of such. There's no evidence of souls. There's no evidence of an afterlife. And so to believe stuff we, just because we want to believe it is dangerous and wrong. And that's the point Matt was trying to make, DJ. Yeah. And one of us, at some point, Dave and I will both be dead. Uh, but there may come a time where one of us is alive and the other one's dead. Uh, if there's any way for one of us to reach out to the other, I'll make a pact right now. Dave, if I die first and there's any possible way to get you a message, I will definitely do it. It'll be the shaking of the pear tree. I'll see the wind blow the, and I'll know it's you, right? That's no. the thing. <laughs> there have been... We we can Thousands. talk all kinds of ideas of who's speaking to us from the other side. Yeah. There have been oh, it's... billions of people have died. And if there was a way to reach out from the other side or if there was another side, um, it would be commonplace. It wouldn't be speculative. It wouldn't be, oh, I felt a weird chill. Oh, I felt like something on my ankle. The cardinal um, came to my window every morning and it's the sign that my beloved husband is coming to tell me it's okay why they always come to tell me it's okay why aren't they come to tell me i'm fucking burning down here yeah i i got a bunch of health issues including diabetic neuropathy and some nerve damage and other stuff i got i got shooting pain like electricity in my arms at different times and my fingers at different times if i believed in nonsense i'd just sit here and think i was being just mauled by ghosts all the damn time but instead i'm gonna go see a doctor but <sighs> Anyway, that's frustrating. I feel bad for the guy because he obviously had some terrible, uh, terrible life and wants to reconnect. But yeah, man, to just make shit up and and to just believe stuff based on nothing just because we want it to be true. That's just so dangerous. Well, Dave, I'm going to I didn't make my make my goal with the last call, but this yeah. call I can guarantee you w will be quick. Drew in California wants to correct me on something. Oh, How boy. you doing, Drew? Hey, good. How are you, Matt? I'm pretty good. Uh did I actually say that the Bible said this life is like dirty rags or did I say that, uh, or did I say that it was something that was in the Bible or did I say that this was a, a doctrinal thing because they're different? Yeah. You said that the Bible says or life is like dirty rags. Then, then you're, then you're absolutely right, Drew. And I misspoke because what it says is that our righteousness is like filthy rags. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. But that yeah. wasn't the only quote. There was, several quotes that you are claiming that we believe or live by and that, you know, our, our life uh, decisions are based on those types of we, who's we. So Christian, I'm saying, okay, so I'm no, 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 no. See, that's the thing, Drew is if, if, if at any time I've ever spoken for Christianity as if it's one homogenous set of mm -hmm. beliefs, you can't, I would, that. I would retract that immediately. Um, I, I generally speak about what the Bible says and, or what, Southern Baptist fundamentalist Protestant upbringing stuff like that I was taught or what uh, somebody else was taught. So you're right. If I said the Bible says his life is like filthy rags, that was me um, being slightly hyperbolic to take the passage from Isaiah about your acts of righteousness being like filthy rags and extending it. So yeah, I stand corrected. Right. Okay. And the other, the other quick, quick, quick thing was you mentioned that it doesn't matter about forgiving other people. It's about us between us and God but it actually says that if we have any ought with our brother, any, any problem with anyone, if we've done anything wrong to anybody, go to them first and make it right and then pray and then go to your father. So yes, but it doesn't say that your salvation is contingent upon that. That's not a, that's not a, a problem with regard to salvation. That's just something you should do. No, it says he doesn't even hear our prayers and, unless we make it right. But your, your prayers aren't what saves you either. You are saved Right, but our 
our whole you are saved by the grace of God, not by any act that you do, whether it's prayer or not. I a hundred percent agree. Hundred percent. Cool. Then, but, then you should stop there while you were ahead on a win, because this one you're not going to get a win. It is not a tenet of salvation within no, any normative Christianity or any normative version of Christianity that you forgive other people. That's right. That's right. So, so our relationship is like a marriage, and so we don't want to do bad to our wife, right? We want if we. Oh love, dear God! I'm you're you're, you're, you're done preaching, Drew. We're moving yeah, on. Yeah, just stop it. Oh yep. Jesus! You, you, you got one. Like we've... Yep. You got one Drew, correction, Drew, and then you got screwed up on the other one. And, so we'll and just Drew, do you say you speak for all Christians. You know, there are so many different versions of of what Christians believe. One must. I mean, Matt just alluded to it earlier that God saves who He wants to. He loves some and hates some, and then others say that whosoever will can pray and believe and be saved. So it's it's all over the place. You can't speak for the whole broad cloth. Yep. But in any case, we have anyway. Charlie in Texas who's calling in, who has a question for us, Dave. Howdy. How are y'all doing? Good. How are you, hey, Charlie? Charlie? I'm doing pretty well. Um, I wanted to have a discussion about um, what constitutes evidence. It seems like in some of the discussions that take place on the atheist experience, there might be a miscommunication between the two callers. So maybe if I could address that, we might be able to discuss a little bit. Sure. What problems I may have with. Okay. All right. Ev so, evidence are simply f facts that are uh, favor a particular conclusion. Oh, okay. So facts. Because I, what I took evidence for you to mean is because you've said in the past that methodological naturalism doesn't have access, or as far as you know, doesn't have can't assess claims about the non-natural. Right? Correct. So That's me methodological naturalism does not include a mechanism to address anything other than the natural world. And there isn't currently right. strong evidence that anything other than the natural world exists. And when there is, then we would then have mechanisms within sciences, et cetera, to, so, to, to um, investigate the supernatural or the non-natural. Well, to be fair, I, I agreed with your first claim that um, the sciences aren't going to have access to studying things that are non-natural. Well, that's, that's the way it is currently. Yes. Yeah, but I think that, um, I think that science is going to be trapped or it's going to be stuck in the realm of studying law like relations between physical things. And so, if it's we're going, going to, to study things that are based on, you know, evidence, empirical evidence, et cetera. But uh, if, if, if something other than the natural world exists and there's evidence for that, then I don't see any reason why that would be precluded from science. Right. So that's where the disagreement is going to come from. Because okay. Well, why would if there was evidence for if there was evidence for a non-natural X, why would that then be ex prohibited? Why why would why would there not be a science about that if there's evidence to evaluate? Because science is just about knowledge. It is not by definition only this particular field. It's we need methods to allow us to detect and investigate a particular field. So before we, before we had microscopes, we couldn't investigate the microscopic very well. Um, and so if in fact there is a way to detect something that's non-natural, why wouldn't we be able to investigate it? Well, there's things, the thing is, is that we're talking about evidence as like a physical thing. But whenever we're talking about something like in philosophy, when we can derive some things like a priori, or we can uh, conceptually analyze... A priori, no, a priori is not a derivation. It's an assumption. But I, I'm, I, I, I don't understand the... Fair, but, uh, I, I, keep ask, I keep asking the same question, and I'm not getting an answer. And that is, here, maybe this is easier. Do, are you convinced that something non-natural exists? Yes, and I can't, but I wouldn't be able to show physical evidence for it. What reason do you have to think that something non-natural exists? What is this thing that is non-natural that you think exists? Well, uh, it's going to exist in virtue of 
the impossibility of um, the contrary position. So that's it. Okay. Say. Stop, Charlie. I'm, I'm saying, okay. what is this thing that's non-natural that you're convinced exists and why? Right. So I can give the arguments for that. So then Could you name the thing first? Give me any, tell me what it is. Right. It's going to be, but what I'm afraid of is that you're going to say it's a material thing. And you're just going to negate me and then move on. But the thing well, then tough shit. If that's the right answer, if that's the answer that I'm coming up with, then that's the answer it's going to be. Why are you being cagey and avoiding this? You're dancing around the answer. Charlie. It's really what annoying. Is, I'll hang up. I got other callers waiting. What, what is, is it that thing? is not? What is it that is non-natural uh, that you think exists? Yeah, it's going to be beliefs. Okay, we've already had this discussion, Charlie, and beliefs don't exist as <sighs> things unto themselves. As far as we can tell, beliefs are nothing but brain states. I am done with this conversation. You're not going to waste any more time on the show with this. Goodbye, Charlie. We've been down that road before. Has he called him with that before? Oh, yes. And we had this whole discussion round and round, and, and that's why I knew we were back to it again. Well, you know when somebody evades the answer directly and, and starts to say, well, you're going to say, you know, that they're just, they know they don't have a position. Jesus Christ. Yep. Sorry. Oh, beliefs are non-natural and they exist. No, that, that's not, the, to the extent that a belief exists, it exists as a <laughs> trying, brain state. Trying to say that there's evidence for a belief. What the, I don't even know how to get my well, head I think there's plenty that. of evidence for, like, beliefs. No, Next, to, I, to it demonstrate yes. that a belief is true because, oh my God. The, 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 the defeater, which Charlie already knew I was going to get to, uh, which is why he called in with a completely different topic listed. Mm -hmm. The defeater is this. Do you have evidence of a belief existing absent of brain? Mm -hmm. No, you don't. No. Uh, and, and you don't have, it doesn't, it clearly doesn't exist as a physical thing, but it doesn't exist without a brain. Ah, Dave. I know. How do you do it? <laughs> Sometimes I do it wrong though. So we got Ronald, who's called in with a third possibility for the divine hiddenness argument. Welcome, Ronald. What do we miss? Uh, well, because you put up, uh, oh, I can't even remember the two that you did. But the third. Uh, either, either God wants me to know, doesn't want me to know he exists at all, or he doesn't want me to know he exists yet. What's the third? Or possibly doesn't even care if anybody knows. If, if there is. So, what so, good is he? What good, I, no, 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 Ronald. That's identical to doesn't want me to know exists. God either God either actively wants people to know, or he doesn't actively want people to know. Doesn't matter what his motivation is. It doesn't matter if he doesn't care. It doesn't matter if he's got good reason. He either wants people to know exists or he doesn't. You didn't come up with a third option. You didn't even remember the two that that I talk, talked about. We're moving on. I've got a what? third option. What's the point of that? It's, it's an explanation for one of the options you've already given. Kids, you guys have a father. He birthed you and he lives and he's around, but he doesn't want to show himself or he can't show himself or doesn't want to show himself yet. But just trust me, he's there. Josh needs some help from us, Dave. And okay. so we've got Josh on the line in New Jersey. Thanks, Josh. Welcome. Hi, thank you. So thanks for taking my call. I'll be quick. Um, so I've spent the last three years in the States. I'm originally from South Africa, and um, my family is super religious. And over the last three years, mainly from watching your show and a lot of the Agatan Foundation on YouTube and the rest of the atheist community, a lot of this stuff has been challenged. So I came out to my mom like about two months ago or so about my doubts, and she was just devastated. And uh, she told me how <clears throat> she still remembers how that day in church, apparently I was very young. I think I was like seven or eight. And uh, she told me I gave my heart to Jesus. And now she's disappointed about the fact that I don't subscribe to this stuff anymore. And I'm going back in about a week. So I don't know whether or not I should play along and risk upsetting my family or just come out as a rabid atheist and possibly be isolated and not get to well, I, would, 
I would avoid the word rabid I mean, just off the bat there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. What, what do you want to get out of it? It's like uh, uh, there's a couple of things that my, my dad constantly, or my mom kind of does this as well. When I speak to her about, um, she's heavily opposed against vaccination and all sorts of stuff like that, which I get and I understand. I mean, we each have our own ideology, but then she, uh, when I asked her, okay, what is your reasoning? She says, cause I worship a God that doesn't allow bad things to happen to me, specifically me. And I'm mm. in this paradox where I'm like, uh -oh, it's confusing to me cause I want her to, not apply that sort of logic to the rest of her life because I, it's, it's kind of, it's a bit disheartening and it's frightening to see that there's this sort of hip, hip kind of hypocrisy, you know, and it's How like she... an answer for everything. She constantly points back to the Bible, which uh, doesn't really make much sense. Have you tried pointing out bad things that have happened to her? many times we've spoken about this multiple times before i've pointed out um i mean if common family issues that both of us have gone through struggles and that my relationship with her that i've spoken about to her before and she just doubled down on this sort of thing i i thought when i when i spoke to her before and told her listen this stuff is a bit fishy and i don't really understand much of it that she would have seen it from my point of view but now she's gone in the complete and total opposite direction and doubled down on her Christianity. And like, I've never heard her speak about inviting a priest into our house. But when I told her I might not be a Christian, she immediately said, oh, oh maybe a priest could help. We should invite one. Hmm. Well, she's afraid. It's strange. Um, She's afraid of what's happened to you. She's concerned for your soul, probably. I don't know what uh, brand of religion she ascribes to, if it's evangelical and believes in a heaven and hell. Um, it's we tough. Are, it, it, we're part, we were part, well, I was part of a Dutch Reformed church. It's exclusive to South Africa. <laughs> Excuse me. What, 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 are your, what are your thoughts and goals for when you go back and what kind of conversations you hope to have? Are you concerned with causing a rift in the family? Are you concerned with you being not, not being able to be genuine and honest about who you are and what you believe or don't believe? What are your concerns? That's, I think the most of it is that, and I just, I don't want to be put in a uncomfortable situation. I remember a few years before I came to the States for the first time, my dad took me to a church and this was an event where the specific um, thing that they wanted to achieve in this day on, at the church was in order to get the entire congregation to be able to speak in tongues. Wow. And the, pre, the head priest, like the, the, the head of the congregation, went around the auditorium with a microphone and literally stuck it up to every person's face, expecting them to do this sort of speaking in tongues, and I, I, this was the most uncomfortable situation I've been in in a very long time. So I, I literally repeated the exact same thing my dad said in order for the priest to kind of make his move to the next person and leave me be. That's the type of thing I'd like to avoid. Wow. So is it, should just... I just play along with that and go along or say no I... and fight against it? I th my, I just throw this out there, and, and I, I hesitate to advise people what to do or not to do. Yeah. Um, every, everyone's situation is unique, and every individual has to make those choices. If it were me, I have come to the position, and I have a lot of family who do not like my atheism. They're very concerned for me. My position is this is who I am, and I'm a happy person. I'm as happy as I've ever been in my life. And if you love me as a family member, you want me to be happy. If you're concerned for me, then I appreciate that. You can pray to whatever God you want to pray to, to yourself, but keep it from me. If you are concerned for me, then just trust this God that you believe in that I'll be okay. 
and I'm not going to pretend to be someone I'm not. This is who I am. If you love me and want me to be happy, you can accept me as I am. If you don't, if you can't, that's your yeah. problem, not mine. And that's the end of the conversation, typically. Yeah, the the ACA doesn't give advice, and any advice that Dave or and I might be comfortable giving um, is just us speaking for ourselves. Uh, that said, I don't know that I can give you advice because I can tell you what I think I would do in that situation, but I'm not you. And what I'm willing to put up with um, yeah. is is going to be different from you because I would absolutely not put up with it anymore. And, and one of the things, you know, if my mom told me God doesn't allow anything bad to happen to you, well, my mom would never say that because my, my mom, absolutely. God allows bad things to happen to her. She just views it as this is because she wasn't right with God. God was punishing her. And you know, this is, this was deserved type of thing. But if somebody, anybody told me God doesn't allow bad things to happen to them, I'd say, can we make a list of bad things that won't ever happen to you? Let's 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 write them down right now. Um, let's make a list of all the things that that, that could be bad, or uh, let's say fifty things that could be bad. Um, and then the second one of them actually happens, you you have to acknowledge that God isn't what you thought, and you know, don't do anything manipulative okay, like. Uh, like there's, there's some ways to be really manipulative with this. And I'll just I'll warn you that I definitely wouldn't do this, which is to be like, Oh, would it be bad if you alienated your son? <laughs> Cause th that's just manipulative crap. Yeah. It's true. It is absolutely true that she would be sad, but it's, you know, it's, that's not what you do, but you know, like, I know. Yeah. And it's, and it's, and it's our moms. We're like, I'm easier on, on my mom and my mom and I argued for six hours one night about this stuff. It's the last time we'll ever argue about this stuff again, but you know, it, it was, it was a lot. Yeah. We've spoken and I, this is one of the first times in many years I've seen her actually cry. So, and I mean, it's a, it's a tough thing because I see her in this, I don't know whether or not it's true of, and it's right of me to say, but it's almost like I see her as like <clears throat> kind of a victim of this idea that she just doesn't want to let go of. But we mm -hmm. have friends of my distant extended family who are Muslims and I've met them a couple times, but it's almost like there's this weird sort of animosity if any of my distant family hangs out with them. So it's almost like, if I don't have any affiliation with a certain religion, it's almost as if I'm allowed to now have a connection with other people that aren't part of my close relatives' religion. And the relatives that are really close to me don't condone that. It's this sort of weird situation to be in. Yeah. Well, the situation you described is pretty out there, you know, going around and having everyone speak in tongues and your mom believing that God's not going to allow anything bad to happen to her. That's some pretty extreme ideology and you're up against a tough, a tough situation there, to be honest, in my opinion. Yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. have any, I, I don't even think I have any great advice for you um, other than follow your heart and continue to interact with your family in the way that you're comfortable. And the minute that you aren't comfortable with something, then you have to reevaluate it. Um, I'm not comfortable yeah. personally pretending I won't lie. I won't pretend I won't go along to get along. Mm -hmm. I will respectfully stand there. You know, I've, I've gone to church with relatives. Um, I am at family gatherings, both for funerals and other things. And when there's prayer, I stand there and I, you know, quietly, I don't sit there. I don't try to do anything that's disruptive. Um, but I don't pretend that I'm someone or something I'm not, but I definitely know people who do and i can appreciate why some of them do i'm fortunate um to have the sort of life and the sort of personality um where i get to be me not everybody is fully able to be them don't get me wrong i know some people who try to use that as an excuse for being liars and frauds but uh 
that's that's not an excuse for that. Your motivations matter. And when you're doing something because you care more about your relationship with your family than you do about them uh, knowing who you are, I can understand and see that and and support that. The second mm -hmm. you care more about yeah. what's true and about them knowing you for who you are than you do about maintaining a relationship, that's when things will change. Yeah. I really appreciate that, Matt. And it's like, thank you as well, Dave. And you guys are, I've seen many of your lectures online and it's your great inspiration for a lot of people that are confused about this stuff. Thank you very much, Josh. I Good wish luck. you the best of luck and let us know what you decide and how it goes. Yeah, how do I, shall I send an email after I've returned? That's probably a good idea. I mean, you can email tv at atheist-community.org. Okay. Uh, something we don't push often enough anymore, but uh, th there is someone there to answer those questions and to make sure they get forwarded to me when they're okay. important. So, Thank you. I really appreciate your advice and the fact that I got to speak to someone that's, uh, I think, one of the most influential people in the atheist community. Well, I don't know if I'd go that far with Dave, but he's pretty cool. <laughs> we all know who he's talking about. I know. I just, I don't do that. Well. But thanks so much, Josh. I'm going to let you go. Because we are almost out of time, and there's one more call to get to in this slight bit of overtime. Peter in Australia wants to know about the legal liability for false prophecies. How are you doing, Peter? I'm good, mate. Yourself? Hey, Peter. Not too bad. Yeah, good day, Dave. How you doing? Good. Uh, so I've been watching this show on YouTube for uh, a lot of years, and it's fairly rare that I get to see the show on live. So, hence I haven't called in earlier. Um, Matt, you did a number of shows uh, a fair while back about um, you know people like Harold Camping, uh, yeah, people who have there's these prophecies that uh, come up and. In one particular show, a, a person called up and said their family had sold up everything they they owned and moved up into the hills uh, because of a prophecy. And uh, of course, it didn't happen. And they sort of had to come back down the hill and uh, restart their lives. I'm wondering how the hell do these pastors and that are they are not getting sued left, right, and centre? It's a good well, question, I guess, but I don't know. I uh, think there would be some liability sometime. I, I'm not a lawyer. I have lots of friends who are. I'd be happy the next time I get one of those lawyer friends on one of my other shows uh, to ask them about this. If I had to guess, I would say it's um, at no point are they... Uh, the way prophecy works, it is all done in the buyer beware sort of yeah. speculative sense. I can be absolutely convinced that this stock is going to quadruple tomorrow. And if I tell you I've got it on really good authority, this stock is going to quadruple tomorrow, but you know, you invest your money. I don't know that I'm necessarily liable for giving a stock tip if it fails. And so similarly, if I say, I think God's coming back tomorrow and taking us all the way to glory, I don't know how you prove liability because one of the things somebody could argue is that you should have fucking known that was nonsense, but I, <laughs> I, I don't know for sure. And well, of course the, the and, legal yeah, laws are going to be different in different countries too. Nobody's, nobody's being coerced. Nobody's being forced to obey the prophet, so to speak. So yeah, I think it's by, I think any judge or court would look at that and say, my God, how could you be so stupid? So, you know, yeah. Now, there are cases where people are being forced and in those like cult like scenarios where they've given up everything and somebody's taken over and now they're in charge of their life. And you get, you know, things like you've seen Waco and other, you know, Marshall mm -hmm. Applewhite, those yeah, um, yeah. now all of a sudden there's potential liability. But I'm not a lawyer. I'm certainly not a lawyer for where, why and how it is around the world. Um, but yeah. I can ask. Yeah, I, it just. Um... You know, obviously, most of your prophecies, I guess your garden variety prophecies, are really uh, vague and abstract. Uh, every now and then, someone like uh, this Harold Camping like sticks his head up and says something really specific with a with a real date, and this is absolutely going to happen. And I would have thought, and especially the people who are directly affected by that, 
um, you know, after it all happens. I mean, I guess the one thing you don't see, even getting away from the legal stuff, you don't really see people leaving that particular church or whatever um, after that happens. Right. It's got nothing to do with the existence of God. It's like, uh, but, you know, this particular pastor's talking shit. Um, I'll go somewhere else. You, you it, that's not what tends to happen. This is, you know, we've seen with Harold Camping and others that um, they just keep changing the date. It's very much like the QAnon folks who keep changing their dates and their uh, and their reasoning behind exactly how and when Trump will return triumphant. Uh, spoiler alert, he's not going to... Neither Trump nor Jesus are going to return triumphant. Um, well, it's the, same, it's the same group of people that are susceptible to these ideas because they want to believe they're, they're, they're e they easily believe things without evidence and they're prone to buy into conspiracy theories. And if we look at the whole of the evangelical message that Jesus is coming back and he's going to ride on a white horse and Armageddon and all that, it's a one big conspiracy theory. And the same group of people believe that, that are going to believe QAnon and going to believe that that the vaccine is a hoax. So, uh, you know, they're all in this, it's the mindset. They want to believe bullshit stuff and they don't need evidence for it. Or at a minimum, there's some overlap. But when it comes to the legal responsibility, in order to have some kind of legal recourse, I get, I think that you would have to be able to show that it was some sort of intentional scam, which yeah. if all of your parishioners sold their belongings and moved out here, but the preacher did not sell his belongings and move out there with him. Now you might have a good case for some sort of scam. But as long as the preacher's in on it too, as long as the people, you know, they're they're invested in this similarly and equally, um, it's really hard to show that there's a scam. And when people sincerely believe something and tell you what they sincerely believe, if if it turns out wrong, the only thing you can do is say, well, we were wrong. But you don't get to sue someone for being sincerely wrong. You'd have to show that there was some intent to deceive. I don't know that you can always do that. Yeah, I get that. Did you ever see a movie called The Man Who Sued God? It was a Billy Connolly movie. Billy Connolly, yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't remember it well, but I love Billy Connolly. So yeah, I, I remember seeing it. I just don't recall the details of it. But I gotta, I gotta let you go, Peter, because we're way past time. Thanks for the call, uh, Peter. I, I appreciate no the call. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, cheers it might be good. Um, there were people who tried to sue the Psychic Friends Network and others, um, it, despite the some, fact that they were had there some lawsuits in Scientology. I can't remember. Seems like there were. Yeah, well, there were a number that that have tried. Um, Scientology yeah. managed to get proclaimed a religion uh, under U.S. law and get banned mm -hmm. in some other countries. Besides, so the law is a little complicated on that. And since we're not lawyers. Let me just nope. say that we're a week out from Halloween. There'll be a Halloween episode of the Atheist Experience. And also, as we pointed out earlier with that clip, the special edition of Truth Wanted on that Halloween evening. Uh, I want to thank Dave. It's been a bit. I don't know when I'm going to get to see you and hang out with you again in person, but I, I appreciate having you on this, the show with us this week. Um, there's a couple of special shows coming up. We... There, there are things I can say and things I can't say. So let me say this. Not only do we really appreciate all the people who are watching the show and who call in, um, we're interested in your thoughts about what's going on, both with the ACA, with the calls and everything else. But if you know people who should be calling in, that person at in your family who thinks that they're going to own every atheist or that we're all just liars or that we're all confused or that maybe it's their pastor or maybe it's a friend of yours um that talks in mad trash about um atheists and skeptics secular humanists and just what how can you know clearly they just want to sin and they don't understand or they've never read this or they've never studied this get those people to call in uh, I'm going to continue trying to take calls quickly so that maybe folks aren't on hold and you want, you have five people on hold for 45 minutes to an hour. And then you try to do a mad scramble at the end. Um, we, we had full lines from shortly after we went live today and I want to get to more calls. And I also want there to be better calls, but that comes with this burden 
most call-in shows throughout history, unless you're a special invited guest, you call in, you talk to a screener, you get through the call, you get to make your statement for 10, 20 seconds, maybe, and then they talk about you and eventually drop you off without ever getting to say anything else. Here we are engaging in a back and forth, but that means it comes with some conditions. If, you're, if you want to have a back and forth where it's just like, hey, man, I thought we could just sit down and hang out and talk about kind of what I'm speculating on about how God might work. I'm not that interested unless you can tell me why. Now, there are other people involved who may be more interested, but if we're going to actually have a lengthy conversation, you need to be able to hold up your end of it, which means telling us what you believe and why. And when there's questions about what's reality, what's evidence, and if we're the only ones that are ever answering anything, what message does that send to the rest of the world? For those people who are all worried about the divine hiddenness question today, oh, does God want me to know he exists? I don't know. I don't think there's a God. I don't have any reason to think there's a God, but I keep getting told by people, by Christians, by others, of course there's a God, and yes, he wants you to know him. Cool. How do you know that? Well, I can't prove it to you. Yes, but somehow you proved it to yourself. This is the thing that keeps getting overlooked in these conversations. They seem satisfied that they can call in and say, well, I believe it, but I can't prove it to you. How did you prove it to yourself? That's what we're asking. There's two components here. What do you believe and why? But the why component also has two components. Why do you believe and why should anyone believe? If you know what convinced you, that's all we're asking. I swear, if you call in and say, I had an experience, it convinced me, I know it shouldn't convince you. Well, there's no point in us having that conversation because I can't debunk and disprove your experience. I don't have a time machine. I can't read minds no matter how much I pretend to when I'm on stage doing the magic show. But at some point, every single person who tells you, oh, you can't prove it. You just have to take it on faith. Something proved it to them. Something convinced them that either this was believable or worth pretending as if they believe. As Dan Dennett has pointed out in the past, quite often what we believe in is belief. And I don't mean in the way that Charlie believes that beliefs are things unto themselves, <laughs> but believing in belief is talking about how we believe there's value in stating and acting as if we believe something if we're not even, even if, even if we're not actually convinced. So get those people to just state why they were convinced. And the follow-up question is, should I be convinced because of your reasoning? And if the answer is yes, cool then we can actually talk about it. And if the answer is no, it's like, well, okay, that's just like your opinion, dude. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Thanks to the mods. Thanks to the crew. Thanks to everybody who's working to make this show and all the other shows happen. Do not forget to check out the podcast, audio only format and all the other shows in the ACA and the two upcoming special Halloween shows. Take care of yourself. We're doing better. We're not quite out of the woods. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Start opening your eyes Start questioning the bullshit Everyone around you buys You think you're setting up your business What goes on between my thighs I wonder, I wonder When will be rid of your life It's time to get sexy, so watch Secular Sexuality Live Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central. Visit tiny.cc slash YTSS and call into the show at 512-991-9242 or connect to the show online at tiny.cc slash callsex.